microbiomes within us as well. And so we think that the mutual relationships between organisms and their microbiomes can offer a demonstration of interdependent resilience. Where will you look? Well, we propose, we propose to measure resilience by looking very specifically at the systems of organisms within the mesoplasmic zone and to look within bodies and at larger scales as well. And we think that the zone can be a kind of a playground for interconnectivity, a remarkably unexplored and even unexploited area of research. Ah, but if more and more people begin playing in this unexplored playground, won't they damage it? Well, what we can say is that the mesoplastic zone seems to be highly resilient in a huge spectrum of stresses are handled by organisms with varying successes, true. But this suggests an interesting model for life that, ex that responds to stressors. We could speak about measurement then. We can take a variety of large specimens. And we have two key model organisms in mind, cobalt and the specialized kind of fish. And both of these species move across a vast spectrum of stresses and depths. Picture rising close to the surface and down, down deep in diurnal cycles, for example. And very selectively, we'll delete the microbiomes of half of them, of a few species, perhaps with antibiotics, and then we'll test their fitness in response to specific stresses, for example, temperature, salinity, oxygen, pressure, acidification. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to specialize one to algae, to algae toxins because we've come across some extraordinary behavior in kind of drunken copepods that we want to look at as well. And we've designed these experiments to be portable and accessible and very interactive. <laughs> and that's where the play comes in. Because a key part of our work involves taking these ideas and experiments and turn them into design understanding that can transform our own built environments. And we think that there's some methods in these experiments that can improve learning. Yes, yes, yes. So demonstrating and teaching the notion of cooperation can lead to resilience within our own society. Well, there's certainly some people that are speaking about this in interesting ways. I mean, Jeff Jackson, <coughs> the person you referred to, uh, <coughs> the director of the Center of Development of Child at Harvard. And he says something interesting. He says that resilience depends on supportive, responsive relationships, mastering a set of capabilities that can help us respond and adapt to adversity in healthy ways. And so we think that this might be an essential component of play. And we think that the playground could be a place where we could build human curiosity and resilience. What we can say is that some of the visual material from the experiments that I was mentioning earlier with the copepods is quite extraordinary. And we think this can serve as a lovely, potent visual expression for design concepts. And perhaps this could find some manifestation in the design of playgrounds. Can you give me an example? Well, for example, there's extraordinary delicate tissue networks forming fish gills. And that could make an extraordinary climbing ground. Or perhaps the circulatory systems of copepods can make a kind of challenging maze. We do think that playgrounds are kinds of extraordinary cauldrons for developing interdependence and cooperation and resiliency. And perhaps that's like the twilight zone of the mesopelagic. Playgrounds may also harbor some extraordinary microbiomes because when we physically interact, we exchange our own microbiomes. So what I'm gathering is that we think of playgrounds as places to include open experiments, inspired by the results, and using the imagery from this research that you have just described. Well, that's right. In short, if we do ask how and why we need to measure results, then we can say that measuring resilience can expand our understanding of how an ecosystem on both micro and macro
mental skills, functions, and response. Now, this has the potential to change how people view their own microbiomes, understanding and caring for the ecology, for the inside and outside of our bodies. Fundamentally, 